In December 1974, Carolyn Sue Rogers was shot and killed during a robbery at Edmund Liquor Store in Oklahoma. A second victim, Belinda Brown, was also shot but survived. The robbers fled, and Brown, who was there to buy alcohol with a fake ID, couldn't recall many details about the attackers. Witnesses, including store clerk Norma Hankins, were unable to identify anyone. The case took a dramatic turn when police, investigating other crimes, began bringing in people who had attended a party in January 1975, including 22-year-old Glenn Simmons. Brown was shown several lineups, and after eight different ones, she identified Simmons and another man, Don Roberts, who had also attended the party. Both men were arrested and charged with capital murder, even though Simmons had a solid alibi. He was in Louisiana at the time. In June 1975, despite having several alibi witnesses testify that Simmons was in Louisiana, both Simmons and Roberts were convicted of murder and sentenced to death. The prosecution's key evidence rested on Brown's eyewitness identification, which would later be shown to be deeply flawed. Years later, hidden police reports revealed that Brown had initially identified other individuals during the lineups and had been uncertain about her identification at first. While the legal system failed Simmons repeatedly, his time in prison took a severe toll on him. He described days when he lost his mind from the stress and hopelessness of his situation. He suffered anxiety attacks, and as the years went by, found it increasingly difficult to hold on to hope. When you watch guys dying all around you all the time, you do the math, he said, reflecting on the mental toll of seeing fellow inmates die in prison while he awaited justice. His struggle intensified further when he was diagnosed with liver cancer, his second battle with the disease just a year before being freed. Placed on a wait list for treatment, Simmons wasn't able to receive chemotherapy while still imprisoned, allowing the cancer to metastasize. My struggle to be released intensified more than it had all the years before, he said. You begin to lose faith, but for me, it never lasts long. In January 2023, Simmons's legal team filed a motion for post-conviction relief, citing new evidence that undermined the key eyewitness testimony and exposed significant flaws in the case. After 48 years of wrongful imprisonment, in July 2023, a judge vacated Simmons' conviction, and he was released on bond. In September, the charges were dismissed entirely, and Simmons was finally a free man. Despite his unimaginable ordeal, Simmons channeled his experience into something positive. After his release, he started a food truck called Freeman Food Truck, where he travels to different areas and serves free food to those in need, giving back to the community that supported him during his long fight for justice. In 2024, Simmons was awarded $7.15 million in compensation for his wrongful conviction marking one of the longest wrongful imprisonments in U.S. history. His legal team is now working to clear the name of Don Roberts, who was released on parole in 2008, but still lives with his conviction. Simmons's story is one of resilience and survival, from battling wrongful imprisonment to fighting cancer to starting a food truck to help others. His journey shows the strength of the human spirit. When you know you're innocent, don't ever stop fighting, he says, a reminder that even in the darkest times, justice and hope can prevail.